what's uh, the first principle of differentiation? So we basically know that if you're given y is equal to, for example, 3x, uh, let's take it to be 3x plus 1. You know that when you're dealing with the dy dx of that function, of the derivative, is basically going to be equal to 3. If we add 3x squared, and then let's say plus, uh, plus 2x, right? So you expect that the derivative in such a case, we understand that, you will need to multiply the power by the coefficient, reduce the power by 1. So 3 times 2 is 6x, reduce the power by 1, it becomes just 1. And then all the same x to the power 1, 1 times 2 is a 2, reduce the power by 1 becomes 1 minus 1 becomes 0, x to the power 0 is just a 1. Okay? So you therefore have 6x plus 2 as a solution. Now according to first principle, the first principle is based on the idea that the derivative, which we call the derivative function, can help you determine the gradient at a given point. Now, if you remember the way you need to, you used to calculate the gradient of a linear function or a straight line, if you are given two, two, two what, two coordinates of a line, right? Let's say these are make up a certain line, like that. You're able to find the steepness of the gradient of the line by saying your gradient denoted as m is a change in y divided by the change in what? In x. So change in y, your y2, 6 minus 4 from the other one, taking that as our y2 and this is a y1, this is our x1 and as x2, as well as for the x it will be 3 minus 2. You get to observe that your solution will be so that is our gradient. Now we can use this basic idea to basically differentiate the function that we have. They are using what we are calling now the first principle. So the basic idea is to take the function to be the y coordinate. Okay. So for the first coordinate, we are going to have x comma y. Now y is equal to that. So we have 3x squared plus 2x as our first coordinate. Now for the other coordinate, which is where the, the, the most important part of this principle is, you'd have to introduce now um, x plus h. So you are saying, okay, if we have, of course using the example of a straight line, if this is the x or y plane, and then you have a line, the basic idea is this. Okay, so we have an original point there. Now, we are now trying to come up with a certain coordinate, with another coordinate, where we are saying, if this is x, okay, well, what will happen as we increase by h to the right? So that coordinate, we are using h to denote the magnitude by which you've moved to the right or the left. So, let's say it will be there. Now, we understand that for you to find the, the y coordinate or the y value, of a function, you just need to plug in the value of x. Now, if we are taking our value of x to be x plus h, that would mean that we need to substitute in that original part of a function, where there is x, we put x plus h. So we're going to our 3, and then x plus h squared plus. Now we have 2x, so where is x again, we put x plus h. The moment you just get that, no matter what you're going to have, it will all be simple for you. So therefore, <coughs> our dy dx. In other terms, in some textbooks, we'll give you the formula as the function of x plus h minus the original function divided by what? Divided by h. So the basic idea is this. We're just trying to focus on the change in y divided by the change in x. Now, note that for the second part, the change, the, 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 the y2 is basically the function. Of course, we know that y represents f of x. So at every part of where we've got the function, where we've got x, we've put x plus h. So that is as good as saying f of x plus h, and then f of x is the original part. So in other terms, all we are doing is this. Okay? We're just subtracting them. So I'm subtracting this y2. So 3x plus h squared plus 2x plus h and then minus the first part, which is 
3x squared plus 2x. And then of course for a denominator as well, we have x plus h minus x, which will just give us h as a difference. Okay. So at this point we are able to expand. So if we expand what is in the bracket cell, you can agree we have x squared plus x squared plus 2hx plus h squared. And then we have, if we multiply there, we have x plus h, 2 times x, 2x plus 2h minus, if we distribute the negative properties there, we're going to have 3x squared minus 2x. Okay, so to just make sure that we speed up on things here, we can actually multiply by this 3 to whatever is inside there. So there, that one will become 3, that one will become 3 times 2 becomes 6, that one will just become 3. So they can just remove the 3 there. Don't forget on the bottom we have what? We are dividing by h. Okay. So, with that understanding, we are able to simplify this. So, our dy dx is equal to so we have 3x squared for the first part plus 6hx plus 3h squared and then we have plus 2x plus 2h and then what we are subtracting is we are subtracting minus 3x squared and then minus 2x so that is able to cancel out with that and then the negative 3x squared is able to subtract that as well and then we are dividing by h which is on the bottom so you can here you see that h is common so you can easily factorize it on the top part so if you remove h you remain with 6x plus 3h plus 2 and then the h on the bottom can now divide okay so what is standing out is you have 6x plus 3h plus 2 now for you to find the solution, the full answer, what you basically get to do is you need to, we are dealing with the limit is as x approaches, sorry, as h approaches 0. That would mean that if we apply that limit on 6x plus 3h plus 2, it means where there is, uh, where there is h, you put what? 0. So that will go away. So your answer remains 6x plus 2, which matches up with the first part there. Okay, so let's proceed and look at a few other practice questions on the same. We'll look at fractions as well.